like to discuss about the topic traditional le learning versus self learning so what is traditional learning so traditional learning which we have been learning since our childhood so it is a process of sitting in the classrooms where a professor comes teaches you the theoretical concepts you will be jotting down some points you will be giving your examinations right then you will get some results okay that is fine so there you are getting your foundation the theoretical concepts give you the basics for all your practical concepts so that is about the traditional learning what is self learning self will be inside you to learn which you, where you are having your zeal inside you to learn or try new things okay so that is self learning now with the one example i am going to combine both traditional learning and the self learning which which uh, which is like which you are showing uh, show, uh, like uh, this obstacle avoidance robot now i will take this example and i will include both the concepts of traditional learning versus self learning okay so you have this subject called as mpmc microprocessors and microcontrollers yes microprocessors and microcontrollers so in your classes you learned what is a processor architecture of processor what is controller architecture of controller you should also learn you should also learn where we can use that processor and where we can use that controller so giving a brief about processor and controller what is a processor it is used to perform many tasks okay where we can use the processor in our mobile phones pcs okay and what is a microcontroller it is used to perform a certain task which can be used in our washing machines and ovens also so the platform which i have used to design this obstacle avoidance robot is ordino So Arduino, taking Arduino as a platform, I have designed me and my team designed this obstacle avoidance robot. So inside the Arduino, you will be having a microcontroller. One application of the microcontroller is it can be used on the Arduino board. Okay, so this is one of its application. So the microcontroller which is used or embedded inside this Arduino is at mega three twenty eight p. So this is the microcontroller which is used inside this Arduino. So you can also add a point in your examination stating that microcontroller is also used in embedded systems. Okay, so that is the point. So using that microcontroller, I have designed this obstacle avoidance robot. This might be seen very like it is easy to design, but when it comes to self learning and uh, like uh, traditional learning, I am going to include all those concepts to this. So first concept which you have linked. your theoretical concept to the practical learning is microcontroller okay and the second thing which i am going to discuss is digital signals versus analog signals so you have all studied about digital signals versus analog signals right in your classes so what is a digital signal a square wave which is having only two values 0 and 1 so in this arduino in this embedded system we are going to connect all the sensors to it so the sensors are of two types analog sensors and the digital sensors so based on that theoretical concept you should be in a position to apply that theoretical concept here so that is a second thing so this is the arduino uno board in arduino we have many types in that uno is one uno is the board which i have included in my project and this is the ultrasonic sensor which pavan has explained you that ultrasonic sensor is being used in this so what is ultrasonic sensor you all know So what is the inner theory of the uh, ultrasonic sensor? Like how it works? Anyone knows how it works? So when a power supply is given, electromagnetic waves from the transmitter. So until and unless there is an obstacle in front of the ultrasonic sensor, the rays are going to travel. They are going to hit the object, and it is the electromagnetic waves are again received by the receiver. So this is the concept which is included in this ultrasonic sensor. So other than ultrasonic sensor, I have also used the servo motor. So what is servo motor? Servo motor is including the concept of pulse width modulation, which you have studied theoretically in your class. Okay. So all these theoretical concepts which I have learned in my classes, I have used all those concepts to de to design this project. So that is the main thing which I am going to explain you. Like whatever the things you learn in your classroom, they are just basics. You have to be aware of the technology, use that technology, combine these theoretical concepts to your learning to design a project which can be helped in the real world. Okay, to solve the real world problems, theoretical learning, self learning, and practical learning. These three things are important in our life. So this is servo motor, and that is motor driver shield. Okay. So three months back we have.
have conducted a survey for 500 students. So out of 500 students, 380 students said that they want practical education. The thing I want to conclude here is practical education kaavali anukunte. It is not the thing. You should also like include inculcate your daily habits with the self learning. If you have self learning, then only you can reach to the practical learning. Then only you can design your projects and help the real world problems. Okay. So that is about this survey and this is about like 24% said that uh, the student who do not prefer uh, like uh, who prefer uh, who do not prefer the practical education they are enough with the traditional learnings and the 76% students said that who want practical education but then and there we have uh, concluded that like practical education is not the thing self learning is the main thing which should be in science okay you can note it down somewhere i'm going to tell you two important things okay so you might be knowing about this research documents, patent documents, having copyrights to that documents, right? So Google Scholar, okay, I'll explain you what is Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is the first thing where you can have the patent documents and the copyright documents. You can search it from there. So what is the difference between a Google and a Google Scholar? Everything you are getting in your Google. Then what is the use of this Google Scholar? In Google, when you type for one document, there might be some documents or few documents which does not allow you to read it. They will ask you for sign in or they will ask you to pay some amount. So not everyone here can pay the amount. Like some might not be affordable to pay the amount. For such documents which are having copyright or the documents written directly from the publishers, you can get directly from the Google Scholar. Okay? Go to Google Scholar, type it in the Google as Google Scholar. You will reach to our website. You can find any project, document, articles, interesting news about the technology okay, directly from the publishers. In Google, what happens is sometimes the information is not accurate and sometimes what happens is they will land you to the different website where you may not get the accurate information. But Google Scholar is not like that. You can get the accurate information directly from the publishers. This is the Sci-Hub. Whatever the links, some links you may not open in this Google Scholar, you can copy that link paste it here, you can open any patent or copyrighted document directly from the publisher. It, it is for free, you, you, there is no need to pay the amount, okay, it is for free, you can download the documents. Write it down because soon you are going to have your mini projects and major projects at that time. We have to prepare our own documentation at that time, these both are going to help you a lot. That's why I am telling you, you can just note down it somewhere. No one is going to help you at that time, so just note down. Google Scholar and Cyber, they are most important. Does the Indian government support Science Day? Yes, absolutely. Indian government is supporting Science Day by conducting few events such as Smart India Hackathon. This is the famous one, Smart India Hackathon, where you have to submit your idea. Okay, you have to submit your idea to the government, which is solving the real world problems in the society. So, if you can submit your problem. If they like the problem, they will support you by investing some money into your idea. So that is about Smart India Hackathon. Next is Indian Science Congress Association. This is also regarding the real world problems. If there is any world problem and you can solve it creatively, innovatively, then you can submit your idea to that association. It is also going to help you in the same way like Smart India Hackathon. How does Erotwaja help students? So Erotwaja is a private limited company as well as a startup company. It is helping the students by linking theoretical concepts which you have learned in your classrooms, schools, colleges to the self-learning and it is solving the real world problems. And in the same way you are going to get few internships through this also. You can check our website www.erotwaja.com. Okay. So with the last quote, science of today is the technology of tomorrow. Now I will hand over to Pranit. Guys, my name is Pranit. I am a final year student. So uh, on behalf of Edward Bata and on the occasion of science day, so now we are going to conduct a small quiz. To discover the atom. A-T-O-M. Atom. Come on guys. Come on guys, go there. Everyone is your friend, so don't worry. Yeah, giving you the offer. Don't answer. Don't answer. Okay, correct answer. Note down her name. Yeah. Excuse me, miss. Tell me your name. Alusha. What is your name? Alusha. Okay. 
Thank you, Anusha. So the first question has been answered. I hope others also take this as a competition and come forward to answers. And the next question is like, why does the sky is in blue color? Why does the sky is in blue color? Uh, stand up, guys. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain in a brief terminology? I mean, you are correct, you are correct only. I am not asking, but just explain the procedure. Come on. It's okay if you can't, if you have told the character. Okay. okay, what are the correct answers? That's the correct procedure also. So, can you tell me your names? And wish you this this one thank you the the thing with two eyes this is called ultrasonic sensor uh, in in some video or in the YouTube uh, I have seen about ultrasonic sensor you can see here this is the ultrasonic sensor I watched the video then I have uh, I have taken some knowledge from it the thing is where I am going to use that knowledge? I want all of you to know knowledge um, is a very wonderful resource. The first thing is knowledge is of no value if it is not unless it is uh, put it into practice. So I have used the knowledge that I have on the ultrasound sensor to build an ob obstacle avoidance robot. Where can I use it? I can use this in uh, autonomous uh, cars. The uh, very thing uh, which everyone will be knowing. You have me might have also heard about Tesla cars. This is the first one. If there is an obstacle uh, which if this senses, it, uh, it will be taking a left turn or right turn to until it reaches its location. Okay? The second one is object following robot. Uh, this can this concept can be implemented uh, in either line follower or a wall follower.